Utopia is not utopia. Utopia is real. <laughs> At Twin Oaks, we're an egalitarian community. We have no leader. Everyone has equal access to decision-making power. Also, it means that we have equal access to our resources. So. Even if you've been here 40 years or you've been here four months, it doesn't matter. We all have equal ownership of the land of the buildings, of the vehicles, and that's part of our egalitarianism. Every member has their own bedroom and we share kitchens and living rooms and bathrooms. And for a hundred people, we have seven houses. It's a lot less use of resources because instead of, you know, in a typical North American household, you would have 80 houses maybe for a hundred people. That means 80, you know, stoves, 80 fridges, 80 washing machines, 80 kitchens that you have to heat when you really, individuals don't need a kitchen all the time. They don't need a laundry room all the time. Because of the way we share things, we're able to live a lot more lightly, a lot more ecologically sustainably. And also, we grow a lot of our own food. We grow about 75% of our own food. And part of why we're able to do that is because there's so many of us. Some people can work in the garden while other people are doing other jobs. We don't all have to be working in our own garden to produce all of our own food. Again, it's a huge benefit to deciding to collectivize your resources, have control over your own resources, decide how you want to do things, and do it all very locally. Really, it's this lesson we all learned in kindergarten, is sharing. It's such a basic life principle, and at Twin Oaks, we've taken it farther than most people take it. So it's just sort of free bike program or take one if you need it up the hill or down the hill and, and I'm the manager and I moved here and that was what I knew how to do and then they said, oh, we need a bike mechanic. And I was an employee at a company. I felt like I was working into a vacuum rather than working for something. You know, I was working for a paycheck, but um, too tired to enjoy the paycheck, really. Everybody was unhappy, you know or everybody hated the boss <laughs> and it's just kind of like why are we against each other or why are we sort of working so hard for these things that are about image or status like social status or you know so I decided to uh, pack up my skills and whatever I thought you know knew and bring it all here and build something that feels more fair or equitable or worthwhile and it, it feels good to do work to work hard and work hard for myself, you know, rather than trying to work for other people. Like at a company as an employee. But you work for the whole community. Yeah, right. But it's also my community, so I like that, you know. I respect the people I work with and feel respected by them. For me, that's very appealing. I feel very drawn into a group that has that energy of, yeah, here we are, building our lives together, and that's what we're doing together. And because we are the ones who are doing it, we can do it in a way that's enjoyable for us. We can work at jobs that we like to work at. We can work at a pace that's comfortable for us, and everyone's able to bring the skills that they're good at, that they're interested in. So some people you know, are really interested in building and repairing our building. Somebody else comes and is interested in solar electricity so all of a sudden we turn some more of our energy needs into solar energy uh, provided rather than on the grid and again all these people bringing their particular gifts and their particular skills and talents means that the group as a whole is stronger is more vibrant we're an income sharing community every member works 42 hours a week some of that is in our domestic areas, like gardening or kitchen work or childcare or all that kind of work. And some of that 42 hours is in our income areas, making tofu and making hammocks that earns money for the community. 
and then together all the money that we earn we distribute equally according to as we have need for it some money for health care some money for food that we can't grow ourselves whatever we need money for together we decide how to spend it well we have two major income areas and that is hammocks and these hammock chairs are part of hammocks and the other major income area is tofu production so we have a lot of different income areas one of the things that we do that's big is um, our seeds business, which is growing very fast because it's the kind of work that most people here want to do. A lot of people don't want to work in a tofu factory. It's a political thing as well as a lifestyle thing for us. No Monsanto. <laughs> but 42 hours a week is a lot. It's a lot, but um, you know we get labor credit for a lot of things that most people in the mainstream world don't get labor credit for, like you know painting your house, fixing the gutters on the roof, um, cooking dinner, doing dishes, uh, you know, all these things we get labor credit for. So really, it's probably the same as working 25 or 30 hours a week. So we do find ourselves with a little bit more leisure time than the average person. Okay, so every member has uh, the opportunity every week to write down what, they, what work areas they uh, want to work in. So this is a labor sheet, um, so I guess my question for you is, what are you okay doing, a garden shift? You said you, you were interested in working in the, in the tofu hut, is that true? Uh... We have this incredibly complex but elegant labor system. It's taken us 45 years to develop it, and by now we've worked out all the bugs. And what's nice about this system is people only have to do the jobs that they want to do here. But on the other hand, is it's very organized because all the little empty spaces get filled in with somebody's name doing that job. So it's just this sort of very flexible yet structured system. We're the masters of our own schedule. Uh, you know, as a member here, you basically don't have to do anything except dishes once a week. Um, and so people generally are happy because they're doing what they want to be doing. The problem with money is, is that it interrupts and can contort social and environmental values. So the credit system that they use is actually a more advanced and better system than a monetary system. It's just based on labour hours with each kind of hour that you do, whether it's in gardening, whether it's looking after children, whatever kind of skill it involves, it's all equal to one hour. Then money really becomes redundant. People in this community decide themselves what is productive work. So they have a lot greater uh, chance of direct democracy in that sense. Yeah. We're a self-organized group. We make decisions together and how that works is each work area here has a manager and the manager does make some decisions for their work area. We don't want a hundred people to have to decide every little thing. And then for decisions that the whole community is involved in, we have a group of people called the planners and they gather information, they hold meetings, they write papers, people can give their input to them. They don't decide for the community, rather they gather the information of what the community wants and make the decision based on that. I've always wanted to live like this in, in a community where you don't really own anything but you own everything. You have to work your quota and these are the jobs you can do. There's a lot of things you can do. And you can have various varying amounts of responsibility with them too. I'm not the cheese manager. I'm just a cheese worker. Okay. Good enough. If we were a community of 20 people, it probably wouldn't make any sense at all to make all our own cheese. But when you get to a certain size and you have a certain, you know, a larger amount of money, a larger amount of labor, uh, it's easier, you can invest in, in more industrial equipment to do the things you want to do. Not just, not just the milk machines, but the dishwashing, the tofu product. 
so that you're not spending all this time doing, you know, doing the repetitive tasks. There are some people who want everything to be handmade, and, and that comes from a sort of fear the way the world is, how everything gets industrialized, and how the how the workers become slaves to the machines. But in our system, uh, we're not trying to squeeze labor out of each other. We're not trying to enslave each other. We're trying to work together, and the machines that we invest in, uh, yeah, they work for us. <laughs> ah, yes, here we go. You guys were scheduled to do dinner help. We're sort of very rich. For example, we have this pond with a wood-burning sauna right beside it, and we have these wonderful sauna evenings, and I have access a wood shop, and I can build whatever I want with an unlimited supply of oak wood, which there's no way I'd have that out there. I give yoga classes. Other people can take my yoga classes for free. You know, it's just part of living here. So we have this quality of life. We're able to offer different experiences and benefits to people that you just can't do on an individual basis. If you look at the income we make collectively and individually, it's nothing close to what a middle class typical person makes. And the reason we're able to live this lifestyle, uh, you know, basically a middle class lifestyle, very comfortable, um, using a lot less money is again because of this radical sharing that we do. So that frees up a lot more energy to provide other kinds of quality of life services and experiences for each other. <laughs> Kind of challenging with activist work here at Twin Oaks. Uh, I mean, there's so much that's just lifestyle activism just by living here. There's things that we're doing um, that creates change just by how we're choosing to live our life. But that doesn't mean that there isn't still work to be done out there. So it's a delicate balancing act, and I definitely do movement support as well. Do do that count on your labor credit? Yes, I do get labor credits for organizing politically and for going to rallies and going to political actions. So. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think we're making the revolution and we're providing an alternative for, you know, once all those old structures have hopefully drop away, people are going to be looking around. In a North American context, I like to think that we are bringing in an alternative that people can look to you know, maybe move to or use as an example for inspiration to create their own alternatives. And one thing that we say is, is that people don't necessarily need to live communally. But what they would need to do is to take the essence of the structure of this community and even if people are living in households or individually by themselves, be involved in community decision making for their local area in how they uh, try and sustain themselves. The kinds of things that people can do is to try and work part-time as much as possible. In other words, only work for money as much as you need to and try and extend the kinds of organisations and the ways that you work and live so that they're involving non-monetary relationships as much as possible. So there's all kinds of ways that people can come for three weeks or three years, you know, live here, learn something, take it away and apply it to the wider world. And that's definitely an important part of what we want to offer. <laughs>
La vie est comment ici? La vie est belle, la vie est simple, mais la vie est pleine de surprises.